I've been painting really since I was in middle school for fun um, and all the way through high school. And um, went to Wheaton deciding to be an art major actually. And I think it was the first day in class that I just didn't feel like a good fit for me. I think it was more theoretical and what I knew that I wanted was something more technical. Uh, but I didn't feel, I felt really deeply, I don't know what it was, but that I need to be there. And so um, I had sisters that were English majors. I knew I loved to read. And so I made the, the jump. And looking back, I'm really grateful for that degree. It made me a better thinker. Um, and I think developed me as a person before like the technique, which I'm really grateful for. Um, but I came to a crossroads my senior year. I didn't feel a lot of peace about going on that track towards a master's in teaching. I was looking at being a high school English teacher. And uh, the more I was in the program, the more I realized that my heart was really split between two places. And I knew that to be a good teacher, I needed to give everything to the students. Um, but I knew the other side of me just really wanted to explore more of art and why I feel this, I don't know what it is, when I, whenever I see beauty or art, I just feel this like, deep hunger inside me that it's like, I have to make too. And it, I couldn't ignore that. So after a, a lot of back and forth, I was studying abroad, actually in England, and came across the Florence Academy of Art. And at the time, I just thought, oh, that would be so funny if I did that. But then the idea really sat with me. And then my senior year, I sat my mom down for coffee and said, I'm going to do this. And she was very gracious and was on board. And that's been a huge help. Um, but never in a million years did I see myself in Florence. So, yeah, it's kind of a wild ride. I, I think it's completely changed the way I am um, as an artist. I think there's two ways I can answer that. For one, um, the way the school has influenced me, and then the way Italy has influenced me. Because the school that I'm in is very, very rigorous, and sometimes I'll be riding home on my bike and I think, oh, I live in Italy, I kind of forgot because I'm at the studio all day long. But it's been, I think the culture of Italy is what's really fed my soul throughout this really rigorous program. And I think, um, you know, going day after day, standing on your feet all day. I mean, I, I walk along the Arno every morning and on the way back. And I think looking around and observing Italian lifestyle I, I've really noticed that people are so much more connected to the present moment and things are simpler. And I think sometimes, at least in the States, there's so much of a grind culture um, that people aren't necessarily experiencing life. Um, and so I'm really grateful to be in this school that is kind of that grind where people are there all day long, but I'm being fed by people and beauty left and right um, that just really kept me going. To be an artist, you need to have beauty in, in order to, to have beauty out. <laughs> I suppose it's my mission statement when it comes to being an artist. It's what's in the forefront of my mind. And a lot of it really emerged during the pandemic. I think it was really helpful, like being in like the fortune buyer of the school, also digging deep into who am I as a person as a, and as an artist. I first came across the phrase, all, all light is love, when I was an undergrad. I was reading a, an essay about Henry, also a tanner, who, another person that I, I love his work. Um, but as I was uh, reading this article, the author said, to tanner, all, all light was love. And when I read that, I just felt like my spirit was just like, yes. And I think what I felt this confirmation of is that when I see beauty, when I see like light hitting something, the way light illuminates so much, like I just feel this presence of love. And no matter what faith tradition you come from, I mean, any sort like a spiritual journey, people talk about a spirit of love. And for me, it looks a certain way. Um, and I think when I'm, when I'm painting, I'm also observing this presence of love. And on the flip side, I think it can be reversed, that all love is light. And I just think of all the, the times in my life that someone has taken an extra step for me, um, who have been there at really dark times and have bring life and light in those areas. And so I really take it seriously. I, I think it's Van Gogh who says, 
um, the most artistic thing you can do is to love somebody. And that is something that I keep at the forefront of my practice. Um, and then beholding really emerged during the pandemic. Um, that's when I lived in Italy for the first year and I spent a lot of time alone, a lot of time alone. And I felt like my life was passing before me. I was at, you know, beholding these beautiful sunsets and I wanted to talk about it with somebody, but no one was there with me. And I had this moment and I was praying and I thought like, God, there's no one to behold my life. Like, does it matter? Does anything matter that I'm witnessing all these beautiful things and I don't get to share that with a person? And, and, and I just had this overwhelming feeling and reminder that there are thousands and thousands of sunsets that happen across the world that nobody sees. And there are millions and millions of flowers that nobody else gets to see, but there's this presence beholding them. And I believe that everything is upheld by love and by light. And I, in that moment, I felt an invitation to show up to those places and be a co-beholder. And that's so much of what my artistic practice is, is just to show up and like, what is here to behold? Yeah. Um, and so one of the pieces, the cabbage painting, uh, Il Cavolo, um, I had so much joy painting that. And I, find, I found so much fascination in the little shapes and details in that cabbage, and it was exploratory for me. How can I make a cabbage out of paint? And and I think I'm I'm like proud of that cabbage because it was a it was just so much fun to paint. I honestly have so much excitement for the future. This time as a student, I've really I felt like I've had to set aside a little bit more of my agenda, or I guess. I guess, or the things that interest me in painting um, to receive this technique. And I'm so excited to move back home. And even studying the artists that I've been looking at during the, my time there, um, they were people, especially the Russian painters, um, so connected to their land and their culture and their people. And being abroad, I, uh, I don't know, I think being an American, you don't really think about that. You don't have this long, like, thousand, like, this is a thousand year old tower right over there. <laughs> Um, but uh, I just feel so much ins more inspired to connect with my land and my people and my place. And um, I'll be taking the technique back with me for sure, the work ethic. Um, but more importantly, I feel like so much energy and, and joy to discover my homeland again. And I, when I go back, I definitely want to keep exploring plain air. It'll be in the summertime and Colorado's beautiful during that time. Um, I just, I'm excited to explore what interests me, things I've had to set aside for the time being.